My dad is charismatic. He's got this great imagination. So, so charming. Did I say charming? <laughs> so, so charming. By 1987, Rod Stewart and Kelly Emberg had been living together out of wedlock for four years. Not even the birth of their daughter, Ruby, could convince Rod to give marriage another try. I think in the end, Kelly decided that Rod simply wasn't ever going to marry her. Three years later, the romance was over. I was very sad because I really liked Kelly. I genuinely loved her. She was like a second mom to me. Kimberly's dad wasted no time getting back in the game. In August 1990, the 45-year-old rock star met a 20-year-old blonde swimsuit model in an L.A. nightclub. Her name, Rachel Hunter. I knew who he was, but I never grew up in any of his music. My dad did, but I never really listened to any of his music. Rod and Rachel went on their first date the next night. We just got on. Our chemistry it was like soulmates. We clicked completely. After that dinner, I went back to New York. Hadn't had done the deed yet. <laughs> Kept him waiting because I figured that he was used to getting that. The first time I met Rachel, my dad introduced her as his accountant. She had like a small, like white skirt on, like tube top, and I was like, wow, it's not like a hot accountant. <laughs> but um, I liked Rachel when I met her, and you know, she was she was close to my age, so it was it was very easy to get along with her. Shortly after Hunter's 21st birthday, Stewart did the unthinkable. He sent me flowers, and we just, he flew out to New York, and three weeks later, he asked me to marry him. You know, over the tuna fish sandwich. I knew immediately this was the one for me, as you said, yeah. She struck me as being someone who had a great deal of energy and being very sociable, <laughs> which, of course, you are, darling. <laughs> Apart from the obvious attributes, you know, that's the first thing that struck me. On December 15th, 1990, four months after they met, Rod and Rachel tied the knot at the Presbyterian Chapel in Beverly Hills. It was gorgeous. It was amazing. It was straight out of, like, a fairy tale. The couple quickly began building a family. On June 1st, 1992, they celebrated the birth of Stuart's fifth child, daughter Renee. A son, Liam, followed two years later. I was excited for brothers and sisters, you know, because I got to, like, change their nappies and pretend I was mom and, you know, so it was fun for me. Rod was having a blast, too. Mrs. S says that uh, uh, she likes the bag. The bag? <laughs> it's not big enough for us, dear. You know that you throw your arms out in the middle of the night? This is a lovely bed. It is a nice bed. She's not big enough because she's a big girl and I'm fairly big too. And I'm long, long in the legs, so we need something a little broader. Marital bliss aside, Rod never let Kimberly forget who came first. My dad, you know, he was so good about it. He always says, like, you're my number one girl, and you always make me feel so special. Now that Kimberly and Sean were older, the singer took them on the road whenever he could. We'd go into the band members' rooms, like the guitar player, and we'd get their key, and like, we would totally trash their room. Like, we'd take out all the light bulbs, we'd put the mattress on the porch, and then there's this one time that my dad got like a dozen chickens and put them in the drummer's room, and they were just like all over the place, and like, that was our entertainment while <laughs> we were there. Kimberly had a blast, but didn't plan on following in dad's footsteps. Instead, she followed moms. The 15-year-old zeroed in on modeling. I went to New York with my mom, and I signed with the Ford agency, which was her agency. I got a Tommy Hilfiger campaign. After that, I got in book to do the shows in Milan. And I went there, and I was doing the fashion shows, and it was just so fun. Back at home, academics became a problem for the high school sophomore. Kimberly bounced from Buckley to Beverly Hills High to Concord High in Santa Monica. Her grades improved, but Kimberly found her social niche outside the classroom. I was just always with my brother and his friends. I always hung out with the boys, which, you know, always gets me into trouble because all of a sudden I'm dating everyone I'm hanging out with. The teenager began dating 20-year-old Scott Kahn, the son of actor James Kahn. Scott was definitely her first boyfriend, her first love. Scott was about four years older than Kimberly, and I was a little 
nervous about it because I thought, wait a minute, he's just too old and too mature to be going out with her. Scott has this um, ability to make you feel safe and taken care of. And I think that that was really awesome for Kimberly because she was so used to, you know, feeling maybe out of, out of place. My dad was so chill about it. He would always be like, what, you got shagging? And I'd be like, oh my god, yeah. So embarrassing. Kimberly's relationship with Alana was more contentious. We clashed a lot, you know what I mean? I was the bull and she had a china shop and I was like going crazy in it. It was difficult. There were times when she was, especially when she was like 16 and 17, that, that sometimes I felt like I was in a bad marriage. I sometimes felt like their anger at their dad not being around would get directed at me. If she and her mom, you know, had a problem and I got the call, would you please talk to your goddaughter, which I did a few times. I got involved a few times. Kimberly didn't like the word no, and she would always find a way around it. In 1997, Kimberly graduated from Concord High and was anxious to start living. I didn't want to go to college. I just wanted to be independent and, you know, move out and, and experience life on my own. I was very much against that. I thought she was too young. And I wanted her to go to college, but she didn't want to go to college. If I said no to something, she'd go to dad. And he thought it was OK for her to get her own apartment. When I was getting out of high school and trying to kind of make my own way into the world, I would get concerned and insecure. So obviously, people have a lot of preconceived notions of, you know, a spoiled little brat or, you know, this crazy rock star's daughter. While Kimberly was determined to shed her pampered image, the pressure to conform took hold. I was extremely flat, flat, flat chested, like growing up. I, I very And very skinny, very gawky. All my friends, they had breasts. I kind of just remained the same, you know, and I knew that it wasn't, it wasn't, they weren't gonna grow. 18 year old Kimberly decided to get breast implants. My mom didn't think it was such a good idea, and it was like, you know, during the time that all of the silicone stuff was going on, and she had taken hers out. I just absolutely put my foot down and said, absolutely not. But then, of course, she went to her dad and talked him into it. Kimberly doesn't necessarily think and weigh out the pros and cons of a situation. She sees it, she does it, it's done. Coming up, a grave diagnosis. It was very traumatic just to hear that word, you know, especially when you're, you're so fit. At Stouffer's, our lasagna is America's favorite for what we put in.